This is Ihesu House. My name is Greg Nelson, spokesman for Ihesu House. This is the first act in an episode consisting of three acts of the first season. So, you might think of this in terms of indexing or thinking or remembering as S1, E1, A1. Season 1, Episode 1, Act 1. The first act in this episode is the first part of what is being opened, cracked, if you will, like a padlock, a safe that you crack, that given three acts, you will be shown what I see that cracks a heretofore unseen or unknown, not exactly unknown, but unfound objects of art These three upcoming acts, which each articulates my logic, reasoning, shaping to illuminate what I see uh, in hopes that you two can see. We'll see. Cracked. There are people whose thinking is cracked. It's not right. It's broken. So, cracked. Season one. Episode one. Act one. Of episode. The estate. The Isabella Deste. Gonzaga. of Mantua family estate the Isabella Deste of Mantua Gonzaga family estate this estate is only partially known. Who are we even talking about? Isabella Deste, a woman who became a marchioness, 
at 15 years old. And the universally celebrated as first lady of the Renaissance in the 1490s, 1500, and patron. She came from the richest Italian family at the time. And she was loved, and she loved the arts. However, in 1534 or 39, I don't recall exactly, when she died, it articulates all of the magnificent antiquity she had acquired And few are known to exist any longer. Why does this matter? Because you will see from the first introduced piece of art that in the year roughly 1500, Leonardo da Vinci was north of her. She being in Mantua, and Leonardo was in Milan. On his way back to Florence, he decided to move back to his virtual hometown in Florence. He stopped by Mantua to visit with Isabella Deste. Leonardo was a Michael Jackson of his day. The world knew who he was. He had already awed peoples of the world with his drawing. Amazing. And sculptor. Brilliance. Stage plays. Impresario. Men at the top of the heap. Whose friends were kings. Leonardo. Not a hollow man. Man of substance. Man of logic, man of beauty, man of extraordinary talent, hailed by all. And Isabella wanted her image made by Leonardo and had sent inquiries and requests. Well, here he is. And as Walter Isaacs and Martin Kemp and many others clearly, clearly find from history that Leonardo did a chalk drawing of her. A pastel. Some uh, tracing their lineage back to the uh, profile image that is attributed to Leonardo of Isabella. Not a real flattering image in profile. But it's also said and recorded by Walter Isaacson that Leonardo, according to letters written by Isabella, sent to Leonardo via an emissary of sorts from the church. He also had a 
color chalk drawing of her from his visit there. And that one of the letter carriers wrote back to Isabella that he, Leonardo, had indeed made a chalk color drawing of her and that it could not be improved. Well, you can imagine what Isabella thought when she heard this, that a trusted man of God tells her that it's perfect, that Leonardo has done it perfectly, he's seen it with his own eyes, it's done, it's not incomplete, it could not be improved. Well, history doesn't trace that particular image beyond that. No one has testified to have seen it. Well, okay. The image that I will show you via a uh, perhaps coordinated uh, video is one purchased as that of Napoleon's sister. Well, sounds pretty long-haired and, uh, you know, intellectual to me, Napoleon's sister. I don't know much about Napoleon, much less his sister. But a casual look at the sisters of Napoleon uh, would beg to make a connection with this image. So what is this image? I don't know. I didn't know. I took the back off and I noticed that it appears to have been on display and stamped on the back of the paper used to draw uh, this chalk drawing, it appears to have hung in one of the Napoleonic uh, international exhibitions, which I think began in the late uh, 1700s, like 1798, and this one perhaps 1803. It's hard to read the uh, numbers, but there are numbers that can be read, and there is text that enable a possible connection recorded at the Louvre in Paris. Along with a color man, it says, which is it almost sounds like a restoration of, of sorts. I don't know. I can't say. The frame, I don't know. Is the frame old? Is the glass old? They're old, yeah, but are they that old? The paper. Can it be traced? 
the uh, forensic analysis to be made of linen, with perhaps specks of wool, and 500-year-old marks where it was hung after it was meshed into something called a canvas of paper. These things I don't know. But what I do know is this. Leonardo drew a color chalk drawing that could not be improved upon of Isabella. This is not Napoleon's sister. That is the story told to the man from whom I bought it. The legend. It had been in his family forever. Came from Europe. And the story that came with it was that it was Napoleon's sister. That's what he was told. That's what he told me. So, I have ruled out Napoleon's sister that that's not at all who it is. It's Isabella. And it's by Leonardo sometime around 1500 in the High Renaissance. When it comes to genius, genius such as a man like Elon Musk, there's no rational bag of things that prove he's a genius. The proof is in his life. He has illuminated those things that were not illuminated. And he's done it for good. God has blessed him. God has blessed me. But not with genius. God has blessed me. with a treasure that I wasn't looking for. Often I think about the story of the man who found a treasure in a field. And seeing this as a tremendous opportunity to increase as an investment. Yeah. Increase as an investment. If he should 
own the treasure. But rather than running to the man who had the land, telling him that there was a treasure <laughs> on his land, although he might have, the man didn't believe him. Who knows? All we know is that he went and sold everything he had and brought the man the proceeds. He said, this is all of it. I haven't kept back a penny. And perhaps all he had was the clothes on his back that he was keeping. Maybe even down to his last lawfully acceptable garment to be in public. He wanted the man to know that he was going to buy. and would do everything that he could to buy it. Because to him, it was a hidden treasure. That had become visible by him. Because he tripped over it, perhaps. In any event, he was blessed it's like God just gave it to him and when he realized that God had just opened the door He made a wise choice. Such is often those arguments used in discussing art. What is a treasure and what is not? What makes it a treasure? I attribute this chalk drawing to Leonardo da Vinci, a work that Walter Isaacson said he had made, a work that a church entrusted man of <laughs> very high estate. Like, you know, up there with the Pope in Italy with this Isabella Deste Gonzaga. That it could not be improved. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful message I'm sure that was to her. Well, the record gets a little bit muddy and some have concluded that uh, in order never did it. That perhaps, I guess, that these Catholic men of high esteem were uh, not being truthful. Trying to spare the young Isabella. 
or whoever he is. Because you see, Leonardo, as he was traveling from the north of Mantua and then arrived in Mantua, not quite sure how long he stayed. I've heard those uh, suggest as a uh, very short time, and others suggest it maybe as long as a year. You know, like toward the end of 1499, early 1500. I don't know, right around there. But that's a fact. But yet, Leonardo died in 1519, and he, along with Francesco Melzi, a son, not a son in the sense of the product of a man and a woman, but a young man treated like a son by Leonardo, the same way he had taken in Salai, his slightly older son. These men, and Salai in particular, were involved in some communication with Isabella. He's mentioned. He's mentioned even as volunteering to her. And he'll paint a portrait of her in color. And then in various documented uh, communications between Isabella. She wrote literally thousands and thousands that still survive letters. And, and just over and over, it's in search of great antiques from Rome. And she said to have had a bust of Octavius that is, Caesar Augustus, the first principate, supposedly, of Rome, even before the day of Christ was born. He was over Rome, though he had died, or wasn't in power, I should say. when Christ died. An important personage in history because he ruled Rome when Herod killed every two-year-old that was male in Bethlehem. I don't know what Octavius knew or didn't know about this event, but it would be hard, <laughs> hard to not know. The wise men from the East, no small thing, be no small thing if Yung Chao Pen and the North Korean man and Vladimir Putin 
all arrived in America to pay homage and to coronate as king. They being seers, they could see things. And the heavens declared to them a king. Had not been crowned, a king had been born. They were there to shower gifts and, if you will, coronate. I say this because in order to understand the moment, the moment that is the High Renaissance, these themes had been the mindset the mental effort and the genius of man had been centered on this story, the story of Christ for a thousand years. At the time of Leonardo, By, by the time the old Roman Empire split around 500 A.D. into the East and the West. And the Western Empire thrived for a thousand years. Public. And the Pope or Papacy also became split into the East and the West. Knowing the context, trying to move one's mind into the moment when the printing press had just been uh, completed. Instead of having a hundred scribes copying a document, you now had to set up a machine one time and you could make a thousand copies. Lots of discoveries made. 14 and 1500s, as men began to want to know more than just the Bible. They wanted to know how the Bible related to their life. this world that we're in relates to the world that we dream about and that we hear once we inhabit it. A Garden of Eden, as it were. These are the struggles of men and women throughout all generations. It's nothing new. The only newness in our day, particularly in some of the Western countries, and more explicitly in those communist countries that declare it, as an opium.
steroid or drug to kind of use as a crutch that these are the things that have been on the minds of men and women everywhere for all time. It's nothing new. Lots going on during this notion. Columbus discovered America, 1492. Remember that one? Isabella of oh, Castile was also coming to power. Well, rather than chasing some of these squirrels uh, down trails that have potential, but perhaps not a lot of profit at this moment. How in the world did this color chalk drawing that I attribute to Leonardo da Vinci, how did it wind up in my house? From whence did it go from Leonardo to perhaps a lie in 1518 when Salai left with many of his artworks, including, I understand, the Mona Lisa. Salai took with him when he left in 1518, and Melzi stayed with him the final year of his life inherited uh, what was remaining of his estate and his artwork. And we have no record I'm aware of of them being in the estate of Isabella de Este, Gonzaga. But we do know they were made and, and have been lost to history or some want to postulate never existed, which is highly unlikely. So, I would mention this. The next two items are also pieces of a puzzle. They fit somewhere in history. And, you know, sometimes if a puzzle piece fits, you have to put it in play. Even though it maybe doesn't look right. All three of the objects, this being Act One, the color chalk drawing, all three come from the same estate, the same man. As heirlooms handed down for so many generations, their actual source, artist, have been lost, but now have been found. And the estate of Isabella de Este in Saga
you will see why it is of her state and why I with good reason attribute it to Leonardo and the one we know that he completed 